Well, greetings everyone, and welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. In this video, I have a big one. I actually have my tripod on the floor raised as high as it will go because there's nowhere on my desk to actually set the camera at. This is a Magnavox 5P stack system. Fresh out of the late 80s, or so you'd think. It's actually an all-in-one because it's a Magnavox. Now, this is a buddy of mine. He has this. It's got some problems. As you can hear, it does work. But what's going cool with this stack is he has the whole system. He has this, the wooden cabinet, both the speakers with the cloth grill. What's even better is my personal speakers, the big Maggie's there, ah, and there. Yeah, with my tweeter I added because the factory ones are junk. That, this is hard because the, the legs on this tripod are swinging out and they're hitting my own legs. That is the exact amp that would have came with them when they're new. So I'm like, let me take this thing home. Of course, I'm, I'm going to fix it for them. But when we're done, I'm going to put these to the to my speakers and see what this can do. Now, this is a Magnavox EC9400. Don't Google it. Don't waste your time. The only thing you're going to find is replacement cartridges for the turntable. That's it. You, you don't find anything about the unit. You can see my hand in the tuner there. Now they fool you to make you think it's a real discreet because if you switch this to tuner, tuner comes on. But again, it's just an all-in-one. Now one thing that if you're, you know, good with the stereo equipment, you would have noticed. Right there in the middle we have some level meters. And they're, uh, they're pegging out. Even the camera, it's probably pretty quiet. That's not... It, no, it, it says audio level indicator. It's not an output. This is literally the input level. If I shut, turn the volume all the way down. All the way down. It's muted. If I crank her up, it's one of these press and hold deals. It makes absolutely no difference. What, what I have power, I, I, I gotta turn on my built-in flash. Two of them I have these Phillips speakers, which came from the same guy, but these I can keep. Whoa, almost knocked this thing over. I'll do a video about these later. They're pretty decent Phillips. They came from one of those micro bookshelf systems. But, okay, issue with this guy. Half the buttons don't work. Sliders barely work. And his aux cord, if you ever had a bad aux cord that has a broken ground and you have one speaker that makes like an echo, it's doing that. Because what he did, and I brought it, he got your normal RCAs, cut the RCAs off, and spliced in a Dollar General 3.5. Of course, electrical taped it. This has got a bad ground, I think, because the right speaker has that echo. I have my own cord in it and it works flawlessly actually. So our balance our balance has been getting better since so I've been using it, but it's really scratchy. The sliders work if you wiggle them. They're they're uh, slotting potentiometers, they do that. This one doesn't work, wiggle it it does. So then they work in the power switch. Now it's not a hard power switch, it does have a standby, but sometimes you'll press it and it'll like, say it's off, I'll turn on it'll bang right back off. Dirty power switch. Nope. So I'll shoot some cleaner than that. So I guess this is the equalizer and this is the amplifier. It does have two tapes in it, and the belts are still good in both decks, which is surprising. And the turntable spins. I don't know if it works or not. I doubt it. It lives in a garage, so it's filthy. So, but just like that, it once came right back on. There we go. Now you're off. So, I'm going to get these speakers off the corner. So I can maybe set the camera. No, I'm going to have to leave the camera here. I'm just going to have to stand in front of it. We'll get this thing unplugged. Get the back popped off. You might be surprised what's inside this thing. Because I have cheated. I already opened the back. 
went to the garage and vacuumed it because there were a bunch of bugs inside of it, some of which which were still living. This thing has a bigger heat sink than my Fisher CA800. Yes, 800, not 880. Now when I first got this, I, I seen that and I was like, okay, this is definitely using STK modules. Here's your EC9400. 700 watt and eh, not quite. I'm gonna say this honestly probably could do 100 watts, but we'll, we'll hook it to my main Maggie's when I get this up and going. I said I have cheated. I already popped the back off to get bugs out of it. Just one of these slide out, and off it comes. Now this board I cannot get off. Our antenna jack has got these plastic pegs, and they're glued. Now the wires do have zip tie strain relief, so honestly it'll probably be fine, but it just bugs me. There's your inside. There's all your discreets. It's one big board up in the front. This works pretty well. I can do like a smooth pan with the tripod. Nice power transformer. It's not it's not really small. Like it's pretty chunky transformer. Like here's what can I use as a size reference. A nine volt battery that I opened. It's pretty chunky. I think this will do at least like 80 watts. Right. So we have a couple boards in this thing. So we need to figure out what does what. Okay, this board. Okay, well, it's out of shot. This board up here, I think this is just our tuner. Yeah, because there's our display. Here's this. This is just all the buttons for the tuner. It's got a ribbon cable to this big board, which is the equalizer. What's that? I got, I got, I got to look. I, I forgot which way this thing's laid out. Oh yeah, so th th this top piece, that that's just the function switches. And I gotta pull that board out. To get, actually, no, the front comes off. Okay. Turntable mechanisms up there somewhere. Uh, dual tape decks with the belts still intact. Uh, not quite. Looks like one's come off the pulley. That one right there, I think that belt come off I doubt the clutch is down there in the bottom the fun part the amplifier this does not use STK modules it actually does use discretes and they're pretty chunky discretes so uh, I really want to see this this whole amplifier is like a bot it just comes out so we're gonna take this out because I really want to get a closer look at the amplifier in this but let's face it, anyone that searches one of these things, that's probably what they're after is the amplifier. A lot of these amplifiers, are, or these all-in-ones, are pretty good if you can find them cheap. Because unless they're really, really cheap, the amplifier will be its own thing. And you can just pull it out, give your own transformer, or even use that one. You got yourself an amplifier. Oh, I never looked in the bottom. I don't know if this has got screws on the bottom or not. Probably does. Fuck, that's heavy. Oh, it does. Okay. Never mind, them screws on the bottom weren't enough. I'd also have to take the power transformer out. I'm not going to do that, so I just slid the back back in. We're going to swing around and we're going to pull the front off. Because the amplifier in this, I think, is actually pretty decent. I just got to swing this big thing around. I had to clear my desk to fit this thing up here, and it barely does. All right, so if I take all these screws in the side off, and the whole front should just come out like the back panel does. This assembly reminds me a lot of the uh, shelf systems we have today. And in the 90s, everyone loved those wacky VFD displays. Especially on, like, Iowa. They did a bunch of that. JVC was up there, too. I don't know how big Sony was in the microsystems back then. I know they still make a bunch today. Matter of fact, I used to have one. Well, the sides are ready to come off. Okay. So actually, I think I took off the stop screw that holds on the turntable. This whole thing will come right off. Yep, it's off. Okay. This is a pretty decent amplifier. Toshiba 2SC3281 and 2SA1302s. Hang on a second. Uh, where did that one go? Let's go over here real quick. Under this towel, to keep it safe, 
is a Fisher C8 875, 150 watts per channel, okay? It has a shorted output transistor. Now, I removed this transistor probably two years ago, but I haven't followed because I don't have a service manual for it. This is the transistor out of that Fisher to a C3281. 3281. Every high-powered amplifier in the mid to late 80s, regardless of what brand, had this pair. This is the exact same pair that Fisher uses in the entire C887X line. The 871 to the 75 or 6, I forget what the top dog is. I think the 6 is the top dog. It's the exact same pair. So that pair is capable of well over 100 watts of output. These caps look a bit small for that, and so does that rectifier, honestly. It's a six amp rectifier. This amplifier, given enough voltage, which by the size of that transformer, it might have easy 100 watts. Easy, piece of cake, won't even sweat it. And that heat sink's huge. Look at it, there's more screws on the bottom. Now I gotta flip this whole thing over. I keep kicking this tripod. We got two screws. Hey, at least all these screws are the same. It's got a little push tabby. And off it comes. So how much of all this stuff is connectors and can be removed? Because I don't have enough slack to bend this down. Yep, so it's literally just them stupid jacks on the back is holding the whole thing. Why? Why must you be different than everybody else? Okay, that wasn't working. I wasn't going to unsolder that connector and I wasn't going to cut it off. So I put that, that side back on, took off the other side, and tripod legs in my way. There's just enough slack that I can lay the face down. While we're here, let's see what's up with this belt. Oh my god. These legs are getting stuck in here. They're getting stuck on my legs. They're hitting the desk oh my god ouch now i'm stepping on things now that belt didn't jump there's a thing under it that the belt goes in well i can't remember what that's called this is just some thick metal top yeah the belts are fine actually ouch that hurt oh and on the amplifier heat sink there is the infamous 2sd313 Pioneer used that transistor a lot. My, my 636 uses it as the regulator for the AM and FM tuner board. The more you know. Actually, the small, I think it was the SX434, used it as the outputs. Yeah, it did. The 313 and whatever its complementary was. 15 watts channel. Always wanted a 434. Never got one. Oh, well. So the EQ sliders have lights in them, right? How it works is there's one light bulb in the bottom and it uses light pipes. Light pipes, and they go into the middle of the sliders. I have never seen that before. That is cool. I know the sliders don't light up. Maybe we can stick a new bulb in it. But I need to figure out how I get this board out because this has got all the switches I need to get to. I figure I'll take off the two screws that hold this board. I don't know what it is. This board's got a couple screws and then uh, plastic clips because everybody likes some plastic clips. Big old connector comes right out. Woo! Put the dust on that. I wonder what this board is. I don't know. We've got a Toshiba TA7784P and a TA. 8135P. Oh, and we have a Sony Dolby chip. That's going to be a Dolby decoder. Hmm. Yeah, so with the screws out, it almost comes out. I got to undo the little daughter board that the power button is on, which will probably be the first thing to get cleaner shot into it. Oh, in this corner, the board's broke. Ooh, another zip tie I get to cut. Actually, no, I don't need to. I can actually just pull this wire through because it's un disconnected. 
Oh, that's cool. Well, there's our board. Ew, it's the crappy potentiometers for the sliders. Oh, I can finally put the tripod on the corner of my desk and sit back down in my chair. So, here it is. This is the front. Well, I think I know what chip drives the level indicator, because I see a pair of Sanyo LA 3600s. I'm going to Google that right quick right now. No. Those are actually those very hard to find equalizer on a chip solution. So instead of using, you know, all your passives and then op amps, you just connect the potentiometer to the chip and using only like one cap and one resistor, you can set what frequency it crosses over and it's all done in those chips. Pretty neat, I've never actually seen that before. Yep, these ICs, I can see what drives these ICs or the level indicators. They are BA 6124s. Driver ICs for LED VU meters, blah, blah, blah. Range is negative 10 to plus 6 dB on a five point bar type LED display. Constant current output so it can drive the LEDs and has a built in rectifier. That sounds like a very stripped down version of the 39, 15, 16. All these wires are on connectors, but only on one end. There's our Sanyo equalizer on the chips, our uh, level meter indicators, both there, kind of buried. What else do we got? We got something down here. I can't see what it is. It is a. I, I can't really see it. It's an LA3161 on chip two pre amplifiers, huh? Hmm. Okay. This is a pretty rubbish preamp. It has 1% THD at 1.3 volts output. That's pretty crappy. Shiba TC9153 AP. Oh yes, the uh, six channel electric volume controller. I have a Fisher over there has that set up. And this big old Toshiba is a whole four bit processor. Don't know what that's for. This is our power switch. It's just these cheap buttons. Can't really see it. We're just gonna squirt a little bit in there. Give her some pushes. And I should fix that crappy power button. Now sometimes these switches have what's, I, I think it's called bounce. It's where you press it once, but if you put it on a scope, you can see multiple presses because it's actually the contacts bouncing off each other. You can actually fix that by putting a very small capacitor across your the switch terminals, the, the, the two terminals, not air quotes. Usually like a 0.1 mic is plenty. You just need enough to filter out that bounce, but not enough that when you press it, the circuitry thinks you're holding it. Because some circuits, let's say like 80s digital did this. Let's say you press a button, it counts as a press. Well, if you hold it, it'll suddenly go on, off, on, off, on, off, on. It'll go back and forth. Not what you want in a power switch. Cleaner? Oh, instantly. Uh, my focus unlocked itself, or my exposure. Fun part's gonna be these. Oh, I'm lucky. When I put it up this way, I can see the carbon tracks. So yeah, they're, they're just exposed. These type of potentiometers are pretty crappy because they're not very reliable. Well, I think I did everything I came in here to do. Just, however, let's, let's check out this light. Let, let's look at this light. Maybe we can stick an LED in it. Because I want to see these sliders light up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
see so I don't think it's going to be that simple to open this. Okay, I give up on the lights. Now I need to figure out why the tuner suddenly just doesn't work, so I'm putting it back together. Oh my god. If I drop a screw one more time, I'm going to lose it. On second thoughts, maybe don't watch Garden Gnomes too carefully. People might talk. Well, I don't know what I did. All I did was I plugged the front back in and plugged in the input on the amplifier, and it worked. Now, I didn't record any of it because I was kind of getting pissed off. I resoldered every uh, plug and ribbon cable on the whole front of this. Oh, and I figured out what this board hanging out is. I should have known. That's the uh, tape deck board. I, I can't think of my language at the moment. Which would make sense because there's a Sony Dolby decoder chip on it. But yeah, that's the tape decks go to it. And then these are both one big board. And this is its own board, which are literally just buttons. And the, t the tuner tuner is this board. I was I was doing that trick. I was thinking maybe I got a bad soldier. I got the plastic end of my screwdriver. My camera looks like it's zoomed in, but it's not. And I started banging on every square half inch of the board. Nothing. So I gave up. I put the face on, and now it works. It just works. It just works. It's not even screwed in yet. Like... So, yeah, I don't know. But it works. And I had to sit here and listen to it to find a commercial so I could play it without, you know, music and getting copyrights. Moving over to, to some YouTube generic music. The equalizer now works. And it, just ignore them. They don't do anything. Is there 50 hertz? About 250. Or 1K? 3.5? And 10. And uh, I only got one speaker connected, but our balance slider is no longer scratchy. And the power switch works properly now, too. So, I'm going to slap it back together. Probably wait until tomorrow. Okay, how can I shut you up? I'll change you. Then I'll hook it to the big boy Maggie's and we'll see what this thing can do so I just took the front off again to put in a screw that I forgot and I to get the front off I have to disconnect that amp wire right there because there's not enough slack in it I turned it back on didn't plug in the wire radio is dead again I plugged it back in now it works so either that's another, maybe it's this. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the audio input to the amplifier board. Because it's right around a bunch of differential pairs. Been around us long enough. What I think could be happening is the ground in that wire is somehow tied to a ground needed for this. I don't know. I do know when I power the amp on with a speaker without that plugged in, it buzzes. It hums because it doesn't know the words. But I plug it in, tuner works, buzz goes away. Don't know. But there is a nice Alan Jackson tape that was left in here. Probably hadn't been used in years and years because, uh, I don't know if you can see now, nah, it won't focus enough. Yeah, I cleaned the head off and it was disgusting. But the tape player sounds a little rough, but. Especially this one. Just outside. But the belts are, yeah, belts are good. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, get it back together. Then tomorrow, we're going to have some fun with it. This is that little echo effect I was trying to explain with his little adapter solution here. This is how it should sound. Now we have this. There's a better part in the song. Alright. 
day. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I think it's caused from a, a broken ground on that side, but I, I know it's his little cable here. He needs to just buy a new one. Man, I gotta hold this button for a while. So, the Magnavox all-in-one. Ignore the equalizer curve. I didn't like that blasting in my ear. This thing hooked up to the big mag speakers. This thing's got some balls to it. It's got every bit as much power as the big old C. I'm, I'm gonna shut that up. I'm probably gonna get copyrighted for that. It's got just as much power as the big old CA 800 down there, and this is having a problem focusing today. There we go. I'm gonna say this has got to have at least 80 watts, although it probably is 100 per channel. See, so that's like the fourth or fifth song I've played full tilt. Oh yeah, she getting warm. It ain't hot. I'd easily run it even longer. And here I am at a different time of the day because I like making a bunch of jump cuts to make it more difficult for me to edit. I got the front clean. I'm not going to worry about the top because like, they don't use this and it sits in a shelf. But I got the front wiped down. Thing works perfectly. As I said in the last clip, it's got to have the, an easy 100 watts because it rattled my walls just as hard as the big boy amps do. So, as always, if you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.